The sleep that one gets after even just one, yes, even just one glass of wine or a beer is not the same sleep that you get when you don't have alcohol circulating in your system. And not trying to be a downer here, but this was discussed in the Huberman Lab podcast episode where I had Dr. Matthew Walker from UC Berkeley on. And of course, Dr. Walker is a world expert in sleep, runs one of the preeminent laboratories studying sleep and its effects wrote the incredible book, Why We Sleep, and so on. Dr. Walker told me, and it certainly is supported by lots and lots of quality peer-reviewed studies in animals and in humans, that when alcohol is present in the brain and bloodstream, that the architecture of sleep is disrupted. Slow wave sleep, deep sleep, and rapid eye movement sleep, all of which are essential for getting a restorative night's sleep, are all disrupted. So for those of you that are drinking a glass or two of wine or having a, a hard liquor drink or a beer in order to fall asleep, the sleep you're getting is simply not high quality sleep or certainly not as high quality as the sleep you'd be getting if you did not have alcohol in your system. Of course, when we're talking about hangover, we're talking generally about the consumption of more than just one or two drinks. Of course, for some people, one or two drinks is probably sufficient to induce hangover, but for most people, it's gonna be having three or four, exceeding the t their typical limit, as it's called. When one ingests too much alcohol for them, one of the reasons they feel terrible the next day is because their sleep isn't really good sleep. In fact, it's not even sleep. It's often considered pseudo sleep, or at least that's what it's called in the sleep science field, because people are in kind of a low level hypnotic kind of trance. It's not real sleep. There are multiple bouts of waking up. They may not even realize they're waking up multiple times. Okay. So there's the sleep induced effects. Then there are the disrupted gut microbiome effects, some of which we talked about earlier. So now you understand the mechanism of alcohol destroying good, healthy gut microbiota, which then leads to leaky gut and things of that sort. But one could imagine ingesting low sugar fermented foods or maybe in prebiotic or probiotic to support the gut microbiome might assist in some of the gut related malaise associated with hangover. In other words, get those gut microbiota healthy again as quickly as possible, or maybe even before you drink, have those gut microbiota healthy. I would hope that you would do that. I think everybody should be doing something to support their gut microbiome, whether or not it's the ingestion of low sugar fermented foods daily, or at least on a regular basis, or ingestion of probiotic or prebiotic. The gut microbiome is so important for so many different things. In terms of hangover and headache, we know that that's caused by vasoconstriction, the constriction of blood vessels that tends to occur as a rebound after a night of drinking. Alcohol tends to induce some vasodilation, at least in some of the capillary beds. And then when the alcohol wears off, there's vasoconstriction and people get brutal headaches. That's why some people will take aspirin or Tylenol or uh, Advil or things like that, the sort of non-steroid anti-inflammatories. I should mention there's a lot of literature coming out that some of these non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs are not good for us for a number of different reasons, the way they impact the liver, the way they impact the immune system, and no surprise, the way they impact the gut microbiome. So I'm not one to tell you what medications to take or not take, but you certainly would want to do a, a quick web search of effects of non-steroid uh, anti-inflammatories um, and aspirin before you start taking those or stop taking those for that matter. Generally, they will alleviate headache, but they can often have other issues, including liver issues. And keep in mind, the night after drinking, your liver has already taken a beating. I believe it's not the greatest idea to burden your liver further through the use of things that are going to cause it to have to work harder and metabolize things if the goal is simply to alleviate a headache. There's a lot of kind of lore, um, old school lore about how to relieve a hangover. We already talked about how eating food won't do that, but eating food will prevent the rapid absorption of even more alcohol into the bloodstream. There's the lore that one should simply ingest more alcohol. What terrible advice that is. That's just gonna delay an even worse hangover. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the reason that that myth came to be, or that I should say that truth came to be, ingestion of more alcohol will cause those constricted vessels that are giving the headache to dilate again. But of course, ingesting more alcohol to relieve a hangover is simply a bad idea. So do not ingest more alcohol simply to try and recover from a hangover. I know many people have tried that one before, but that's a terrible idea. Now, one thing that you'll also hear out there is that 
deliberate cold exposure. For instance, taking a cold shower might relieve hangover. I find this one particularly interesting because we've done episodes on the benefits of deliberate cold exposure. We have an entire episode about that. But here I went into the literature and I found something kind of interesting. There is some evidence that increasing levels of epinephrine in the bloodstream can actually help with alcohol clearance. That was very surprising to me, and I want to point out this is not a large and robust literature, but there's some evidence pointing to the fact that when levels of epinephrine, adrenaline, are raised in the brain and bloodstream, that some of the components of alcohol metabolism can be accelerated, and some of the inebriating effects of alcohol can be reduced. So one could imagine using deliberate cold exposure as a way to accelerate the recovery from hangover. Other components of hangover that could be good targets for trying to alleviate hangover is the dehydration associated with alcohol. Alcohol is a diuretic for multiple reasons. It causes people to excrete not only water, but also sodium. Sodium is an electrolyte critical for the function of neurons. So making sure that you have enough sodium, potassium, and magnesium, so-called electrolytes, is going to be important for proper brain function, bodily organ function. Even for people that have just had one or two drinks the night before, it's likely that your electrolyte balance and your fluid balance is going to be disrupted. And that's because alcohol also disrupts the so-called vasopressin pathway. Having your electrolytes at the proper levels before you drink is ideal. Some people will say for every glass of alcohol that you drink, you should drink one glass of water. I would say better would be two glasses of water given the dehydrating effects of alcohol. And even better would be water with electrolytes. That certainly would set you up for a better day the next day. And if you don't manage to do that, because I suppose it's kind of geeky walking around with electrolyte packets out at the bar or, what, or whatnot, although geeky in my book is a good thing. The next day you could take some electrolytes upon waking, uh, maybe even some before you go to sleep uh, at the night of drinking. So hangovers made worse by disturbed sleep, made worse by disrupted gut microbiome, made worse by disrupted electrolytes made worse by the depletion of epinephrine and dopamine. That's why replenishing the microbiome with fermented foods, low sugar fermented foods that is, that's why using safe deliberate cold exposure for spiking adrenaline and for increasing dopamine. And that's why consuming electrolytes are all going to be beneficial.